All right, everybody. Uh, Y'all know who it is, Metro Meta and... At One Marcus Flowers. And uh, we'd like to thank you for watching and listening to our content. Uh, we'd like to thank you even more if you, you know, leave a like, a comment. Subscribe, definitely subscribe. We need that subscribe, subscription, subscription, subscription. <laughs> hey, don't forget to share with all your friends and uh, tell us how you feel. And tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that you got it from 26 and Glencoe Media Network. Keep it real. You're taking it off. Yo, 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 y'all know who it is, Metro Meta, he who shall not be named. And this is Dust Off the Cartridge, Volume 2, Episode 22, 21. And I am here with... Flo, a.k.a. Call Me What You Want, Just Don't Call Me Lazy, a.k.a. Flo, my hero. Back for another edition to talk about all things video games. Yes, yes we are. Alright, let's get, let's get started with this. Start up, Ubisoft Forward. Oh, whoa, 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 you... You you right. trying to rush, man? All right. What what are you currently playing right now? Uh, so uh, to celebrate uh the start of the school year, I picked up Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Okay. So how, I did, how is that? I've I've been seeing you play it, and you seem very can you not uh, talk like that. You seem what is very wrong interested you? in it. Uh, so what is it? So Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. It is a action esque RPG. Uh, I play Xenoblade Chronicles two. Uh, which was a new game for the Switch. Definitive Edition is a remake of the Wii U title. Uh, so I was very... I was interested in it, hesitantly, just because I know Xenoblade as uh, as a series from okay. 2 and watching it. I'm very excited as many to get Xenoblade X off of the Wii U. Uh, Xenoblade Definitive, I never really was as... Excited for this one as I was for uh, X, just because just the combat system and the world building wasn't, it just wasn't clicking with me like uh, Xenoblade 2 was. And so I was hesitant to get this one. It was like between this or Persona 4. Okay. And I just decided, you know what, I can just play this one. And it's going to take me a while. It's like a hundred hour game like Xenoblade 2. But uh, so far, the story is interesting i hear it's really good they did this thing in the beginning where they left me with two of the most least interesting characters i cared about ever and i was just sitting here like do i really got to deal with this for so long uh thankfully it's starting to pick up with just better characters or just the ones i don't like talking as much but um it's interesting it's a jrpg that is if you like JRPGs, this is the JRPG series for you. Okay, uh, anything else that you're playing? Uh, I might get back into Yakuza. I've been thinking about that. Okay. And of course, uh, Animal Crossing. Um, so I don't know. I, I haven't shared my plight with uh, my viewers, but uh, one of my first villagers on my Animal Crossing island is named Coach. He's a moose. He's hideous. And I've done everything in my power to try and make him move. Uh, you know, I hit him with uh, hit him with nets. I ignored him for months, and he never wanted to move. And so <laughs> eventually, I broke down and I bought a third party uh, Nintendo card to replace him. So I did that, and then I got another villager, which was a dog. And then I got a. Uh, I had Raymond on my village camp, and I wish I had put it up on Twitter because I definitely could have got some money for him. But uh, yeah, that was that's basically what I've been doing. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, so currently I'm playing uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, I like it; it's pretty cool. Uh, I finally picked, I finally opened my God of War after a year of ha- year and a half. That's pretty fun. Um, but my attention has been all in on Fall Guys. I have been playing that religiously for about two to three hours every night. Uh, some nights I go till four in the morning. Some nights I go till one. Some nights I go through two. But the, the result joys of working at home. But the result is always the same. I lose. So, <laughs> but I always think. Are you excited for t- season two? I am excited. I always think next time will be the time I make it. And that next time never comes, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try again. And soon, one try turns to five tries, turns to ten tries, turns to 50 tries, turns to 100 times, and then you just lose count. 
But, uh, yeah. Oh, and I'm also uh, working on my um, Pokemon. I am getting Shinies, and I am um, getting ready for battle because the new season is this week. And uh, I'm getting ready to enter some tournaments. So I also shout out to uh, Instacoin. They finally sent me my jacket I ordered in July. So yeah, yeah. my Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West. I'm so so excited for that game. Uh, moving forward, Ubisoft Forward September 10th. They just announced this today. Now this is interesting because it's amid Ubisoft having another PR nightmare. Mm. On top of the sexual harassment that they had to deal with earlier this year. Earlier this week for one of their mobile games, they got in trouble for, well, making Black Lives Matter protesters the villains in a mobile game. Wow. That went over well. What game was so this? Well. I don't know. One of their spec ops, one of their stupid mobile So how, games. How, did that, how did that come about? It was an intro sequence where they used the Black Lives Matter fist or just the, the raised fist as a... Uh, backdrop and as the symbol for the villain in the game mm. yeah ubisoft really good at making bad decisions right before good events uh speaking of ubisoft forward um they have a few things coming up uh so in the rumor sphere what we're hearing is Gods and Monsters. Now, I don't know if you remember Gods and Monsters. I, I vaguely do. Uh, can you refresh my memory? It was... Uh, it looked like Breath of the Wild. It's, okay. uh, it's a Greek action RPG based made by the same people who make the Assassin's Creed games. And so, going into this event, uh, there is some rumors that uh, they're changing the name from Gods and Monsters... To the Immortal Phoenix Rising. Mm. Uh, I'll be honest, I prefer Gods and Monsters. Really? But I have been excited about this game ever since it was announced. We yeah. haven't seen gameplay yet. Will though. this be on the PS4 or the PS5? Or the new or the next generation? It is PS4, uh, Xbox, and Switch so far. And it'll probably get updates later on. Okay, cool. If it comes out 2021. Other than that, they'll probably have more information on... Because the thing is, with Ubisoft, we mostly know everything that they're doing. Like, they have Watch Dogs Legion, which I'm excited for. Which, I don't know how much more they want to show of that game. Rainbow Six Siege and Hyperscape. Hyperscape probably has an update or something coming down the line. Same as Rainbow Six Siege. Um, Other than that, the only other thing that I can think of that they could announce that would really get people on their side... Would be a release date for Beyond Good and Evil, which definitely is going to be a next gen title. Right, right. And even then, I think that's not going to be till like twenty twenty one or late, late, late twenty twenty one. If that, if it, I'm pretty sure that's become their like, like money sinkhole. And so that's what Ubisoft Forward. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be able to watch this because I'll probably be at work. Or uh, what about you, Marcus? Uh, I, yeah, I know. I'm definitely going to watch it. Um, September 10th, yeah, I'll definitely watch it. Definitely take notes. I'll probably, I'm probably, well, I'm going to do a reaction on it. So, um, yeah. All right. Um, speaking of Ubisoft, they might have linked some, leaked something they shouldn't have. Uh, so on, uh, FAQ board talking about backwards compatibility on the different consoles, uh, they announced that, uh, PlayStation 4 titles... Uh, will be supported for the PS5, but PlayStation 3, 2, and 1 games are not possible. So it won't have backwards compatibility. At least there's no plans for that now. Uh, how do you feel about this? Man, I don't care. Uh, PS1, PS2, PS3 games, they all had their shine. They've all had their era. And I just feel like in 2020, why would I want to play a game with bad graphics? Like, so that... Like, the only... The only games that I would really want to play with backwards compatibility is NBA Street Volume 2 and NFL Street. And even then, it's going to be like old rosters, and I wouldn't really like that. But, um, but yeah, I don't see what the big deal is. I don't know why people are so stuck on nostalgia that they're like, no, we got to have these, we got to have this. It's like, nah. Well, why would you want that? Like, it, it, why would you want... Why would you want to be playing on an inferior product? That... 
doesn't make that uh that just doesn't that just makes everybody look bad. Well, it does add more value to the console just you being able to play your old games. I think for me in general, I find it difficult to go back to those games because we don't have the same quality of life issues. I think, again, that's part of the reason why I was so hesitant to go back and play Persona 4 Mm -hmm. was I just got done playing Persona 5 Royal, which is the most optimized Persona I've ever seen. And so for me, when it comes to backwards compatibility, it'd be nice just because there are a few amount of older games that I really want to play. But at the end of the day, I'd rather those games get remakes where they just make it look better and give us the quality of life aspects that we need in order to make sure that I get the best just just the best um just the best experience honestly but again you talk about there's many games and series that aren't as popular and probably won't get remade and I think that is the aspect people also think about when they're talking about backwards compatibility right right so, uh, moving on, we didn't get a chance to talk about this. Uh, Halo Infin- Infinite has been delayed to 2021, if that. How do you feel about this? Don't care. Wasn't going to play it anyway. <laughs> I mean... I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter to a person like me. I wasn't going to play it. It's a big blow, I think, to the Xbox Series X. When you're talking, okay, what's our day one games... And again, going back to that backwards compatibility, that's their day one games. Is right. their entire back backwards compatibility log, log, which is huge. It's a massive library of games that have been out for several years that everybody has already played. And so it just, it reeks of not having something special on the table. And, you know, people were talking about like the gameplay and the graphics weren't looking as hot as they should be for me. I, they looked normal, but again, this is supposed to be a system seller, so they probably should look better. But also for me, what I would say is, honestly, people were like, oh, the gameplay looks good. I don't know how you felt, Marcus. That gameplay looked, like, fairly boring to me. Like, it looked like... It did. It looked looked rather boring, and it looked like something I've already played before. Like, I've already played, uh, I played Halo before. And it really looked very similar to what I played on the Xbox 360. Like, it didn't seem like there was much progress from what I played 10 years ago to what they showed me at their uh, at their screen, and I wasn't impressed. Well, that was, that was what they were trying to do. They are trying to go back to old school Halo because people didn't like the new ones because of different changes they made. Right. But for me, I was looking at it, I was like, there's not a lot of enemies on screen. It looked fairly monotonous and boring. Like, just looking at it, for me at least, it looked like watered-down Doom. And I don't even like Doom, but I was like, this is just less exciting Doom. And, you know, it might be more an atmosphere and more of a, like a combat puzzle I- ideal that they need to, that I need to actually experience in order to understand it. But for me, I was looking at that and I was going, this looks like a boring FPS with mild changes and a mediocre graphics. And so hopefully they expand upon this. Uh, speaking of next gen, so the Ratchet and Clank demo was shown. Yeah, I, I love Did that. Did you like that? that? Yes. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm interested in this. I They say this is a launch window game, which I'm thinking means it's probably coming in a couple of weeks. Right. But after the PlayStation launch, because I'm thinking if I'm uh, Sony, like, Spider-Man Day 1. Even if you have Ratchet and Clank, like, if the PlayStation comes out early November, Spider-Man comes out Day 1, maybe a week, two weeks later, Ratchet and Clank comes out before Black Friday for the kids. Right. Like, I think that's a good plan, fairly. No, it really out. is. It really is. Uh, But we'll see how this goes. Uh, I've never played a Ratchet and Clank game. What I will say is Insomniac has probably been the best investment either studio has made this generation. Right. When you're talking when you're looking at who they picked up between Sony and Microsoft, Sony got an already amazing selling Spider Man game and two launch titles out of one studio. Right. And so that is just already 
amazing, especially considering you have all their other studios are on cooldown right now. Like you have Santa Monica did God of War maybe two, three years ago, so they're still working on theirs. Naughty Dog just released the game. Same as Sucker Punch, which has basically been ghosted this whole generation. So those studios got two, three more years before they have anything out the pipeline. Except for Ghost of Tsushima's multiplayer mode. And maybe a multiplayer mode for Last of Us. And then Gorilla has Forbidden West. And so I'm looking at the studios and I'm going, a lot of your studios are on cooldown right now. And so just Insania being able to come in there being like, we got another Spider-Man game played. We got Miles Morales. And we got Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, they're really that setting it up. That is that is really sucking up to Daddy right there. Um, let's talk some PC gamer news. Uh, now Marcus, we don't play PC games a lot. No, but have, you do have a uh, PC uh, laptop. Yeah, I have a PC laptop. It's running an RTX two sixty, and today Nvidia announced RTX uh, three eighty. Okay. So a whole jump. And these are supposed to be monster cards. And uh, one thing that uh, just stood out to everybody was the price. So, uh, let's see. Finally, the RTX 370, which is the lowest variety of it, for $499. Now, if you know anything about PC cards, that's a lot. I'm not not a lot. That's very cheap. It is. That is extremely cheap. I think I saw like the last variant of the last uh card that came out right before this, maybe like last year, was running at like one fifteen. Yeah. And so, so if I to... bought that card, I'm heated right now. Right. I'm heated right, right now. Right. Especially just a few months later and you see that. Yeah. But honestly for me, the thing that really stuck out for me was thinking about, like, if you're, again, if you're somebody who likes Xbox games, all the Xbox games are going on PC. And if you want to build a beast PC, you could pick up that card for what would be the price of an Xbox. Now, of course, you also have to build it with the rest of the PC, which is also going to be fairly expensive. But you're looking at at least, I'd say, probably... 115 for the whole PC to keep everything in line around that much. Maybe 2000 but that's still not, like, bad. Like, my PC I'm rocking right now, like, was around that cost. And to be able to play all the Xbox games and outperform it, that's just massive for me, especially when you're talking about, like, Xbox not having as many just exclusives for the first few years. But they do have Microsoft Flight Simulator, which for some reason they refuse to put on the Xbox X. Yeah. Which is very exciting for those people. I'm very sorry. DC Fandom, we talked a little bit about this in the other Super Flow Bros that came out last week. So shout outs and uh, check that out. Uh, so two games are announced. Suicide Squad and uh, Gotham Knights. Which one are you the most excited for? So, I'm going to be excited for when I'm Jason Todd and I get to run Gotham the way I want to run Gotham. I <laughs> want to play Harley Quinn and beat up Superman. That's my goal. Nah, that ain't going to happen. Uh, but, um, no, I'm definitely I'm more excited for uh, Gotham Knights just because uh, I'm a big fan of the Bat Family and just... Um, and I'm actually going to be glad that Bruce Wayne isn't there. Yeah. All right. So, um, just being able to work with them more is going to be great. Yeah. Um, I just what What about the Suicide Squad? You said you talked about uh, Harley Quinn. Um, are you excited to use anybody else? The Suicide Squad lineup was like Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Boomerang, uh, King Shark, right? Right. Um, maybe Boomerang. I mean, honestly, I just care mostly about Harley Quinn. Because she's my favorite character. I'll play her in any game. Um, what I will say is it also gave me mad Sunside Overdrive vibes. Which is a very (laughs) nice, uh, game. Also made by Insomniac. Right, right. Um, yeah, no, I think both of these games are going to, uh, do well. Yeah, they're definitely going to be good. Definitely going to be interesting to see how these games perform just over the course of 
Because Suicide Squad is next-gen only, and Gotham Knights is cross-gen. So it's very interesting to see this plan. I think today they AT&T just announced that they're not selling these studios just because they were like, oh, they're too valuable. Right. And a lot of people were just... Is it AT&T or Warner Brothers? AT&T owns Warner Brothers. Okay. And so a lot of people were thinking basically, oh, AT&T was just waiting to see how these uh, games perform. Just, I think, in terms of the fandom, the DC fandom, to be like, are we going to keep these or do we need to change something? And so I guess they just rounded out and just said, I guess we'll keep them. So shout outs to those developers. Can't wait to see what you're working on again. All right. Uh, a game that launched today, Marvel's Avengers. Yes. Uh, so this game has catched a lot of heat these past few weeks. Yeah, I but I've been uh, I actually had it for uh, pre order, but I just decided to wait. Um, but I'm still gonna get it. But I think uh, I think it's fine. Like I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, yeah. So the main problem people have with it is the monetization model. It is full of a lot of microtransactions, um, and a lot of uh, just predatory things. In terms of a business model, what I will say is, at least from some of the people I've seen on Twitter, uh, shout outs to Bless from Kind of Funny, they were saying that the game is actually kind of fun. Uh, yeah, it people, looks fun. Yeah, which people weren't actually expecting, and um, just reading the comments from his tweet is, from what I hear, the the story might actually be very good. So that, if it is a really good uh, story, I might go and pick up your pre-order. Uh, let me see. Let me see what uh, it's running on Meta. See if those drop yet. It's definitely going to get review bombed. Like, no, yeah, like no all things, cap, it's going to get review bombed. Like, all things Marvel, it's going to get review bombed. So. I mean, in games. I just general. feel like when it comes to games, you have to know for yourself. Like, it just like, there's probably, there's always going to be games that aren't um, your niche. But if you don't play them, you would never know. You should never go off of another person's opinion. When it comes to you and your gaming experience. Yeah. I am excited to play as Kamala Khan. She's one of my favorite uh, characters. So that's going to be extremely fun to do. Uh, but speaking of gaming uh, problems. Let's get to our boss battle out here in these streets. Madden. It dropped. When did Madden drop? Madden dropped on Friday. Last Friday. Dropped on last Friday, and uh, people are mad. You know, people are upset. Uh, they in their feelings like they Drake. Uh, let's check the... Checking the Metacritic for Madden right now. It is sitting at a 63 for regular critics and a .03 for user reviews, which is uh, not good. Uh, some of the reports for the reasons why people why it's being review bombed, it's glitchy, uh, full of microtransactions, obviously all the time. Um, it also there's been reports of people seeing graphics glitch out and showing Madden 2020 instead of 21. Right. Because as everyone knows, these sports games are just roster updates. Yeah. Charging sixty bucks for Rockstar update, and it's gonna be uh, seventy in next next gen, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I know you still play these games and you like them. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Waste of money, and you're being ripped off, people. You are being ripped off, and I can't believe you let yourself do it. But uh, Marcus, how do you feel about this Madden? Uh, so, uh, I, I did the pre-order. I also didn't get that just because I wanted to wait and see. And of course with the review bonds, but I'm probably still get it just because, um, just to, cause I'm not that good. At, I'm not as good at Madden as I would like to be. So just to get that under my belt and be a better Madden player. Uh, but yeah, no, I just, I think it's fine. Like you get what you get out of a Madden. I don't know what uh, people were expecting. They were expecting so, a new game because they sold them a new game. 
So, but it's just like it's Madden. So, like, how much more do you want them to do? But um, you paid course. sixty bucks for a roster update. That's but, that's the problem people have with this. You're paying sixty bucks for a roster update. Yeah, but uh, that is ridiculous. Like. If regardless of what more you want them to do. And it's not like they can't make changes. Even in this Madden, they had the Backyard, which was a new mode, which people said was good, but not fleshed out enough yeah. and full of microtransactions. They said the Story mode was lazy and full of microtransactions. And so it's not like there's not more they can do to make these games more of a power value. Honestly, a better change to this system would be just for EA to just cut out the cut out the yearly thing and just say Madden and just have a roaming game where it's just a live service. But why would they do that? They don't make money off of that. That's dumb. They make <laughs> money off of microtransactions. They make yeah, more money off of microtransactions gotta, than selling the game. But you got to think if they can they're not going to get Okay, if you do a roster update and you do a roster update like every like 3 months and you're like, okay, roster update, roster update, roster update, but you don't add any new features. It's like, what's the point? It'd be like a new season. Like what happens with every other game, like with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. See, but they, add, Battle they, add, but they add like more guns in the next season. You're what adding you more players in this but season. See, but it's different because when you're talking about a Call of Duty, you're adding, you're adding weapons that act differently. And of course, you're adding players, but typically those players... Uh, are just like the old players, and you gotta wait till they're fleshed out. So you have to add a new mode or a new feature that would entice a person to be like, okay, I'm gonna just chill with the same Madden I had for two years. Yeah, but you just you just don't change the name. EA has absolutely no competition with this. No one else is making NFL games. It doesn't even matter. They could do a roster update every year. It doesn't matter because there's not going to be any competition. What are they going to do? Play the other sports game that they also make? Right. Uh, I don't. I mean, you get what you get from Madden, so I, I don't care either way. Uh, what's the? Oh, it has a meta score of uh, 63, but uh, who knows? It was meta bomb. It has a user score of 0.3. So, but that even the critic very score upset. is bad. Compared to the People other Madden People are very games. upset, so. I just, take a year off. Or at least, See, again. And that's what, uh, that's actually what WWE did. Because there's no 2K22. Because 2K21 was so bad. They're taking, they took a year off. And then they're, hopefully they're going to come back with 2K23. Or, mm -hmm. what we, yeah, it'd be 2K22. Yeah, so. but just like. Or just don't make a yearly sports game. But I also think it's it has to deal with rights when you take a... I think it's something or a contract that has to deal with rights and it reverts back. Yeah. Like, so, like, if they don't make a game, then the NFL will be like, yo, okay, we could take your license and give it to somebody else. Like, you But honestly, it. when you're talking about this, what other studio would you want to give this to? Uh, I Maybe mean, Activision. That would be another studio that would be as money hungry as EA. But like it's the safest bet. That's why Disney gave EA the Star Wars license cuz they're the safest bet. They're the most corporate corporation in the video game industry. Right, right. Yeah, but uh we'll see. I don't care. I'm gonna still play it. I'm gonna still buy it. So <laughs> part of the problem right here, people. Uh I guess but that is a wrap of the Dust Off the Cartridge. Once again, I am Flow My Hero. Follow me on all social media platforms at Flow My Hero. Follow Metro Meta at Metro Meta 26. Follow the brand on Twitter at 26 and G. Follow us on Instagram at 26 and Glencoe. Follow us on Facebook at 26 and Glencoe Media Network. Follow us on YouTube at 26 and Glencoe Media Network. Make sure you have subscribed on all of our uh, platforms, podcasts, wherever you find us. Make sure you subscribe and you leave a five-star review. We really appreciate that. And until next time, peace. See ya. All right, everybody. Uh, Y'all know who it is, Metro Meta and... At One Marcus Flowers. And uh, we'd like to thank you for watching and listening to our content. Uh, we'd like to thank you even more if you, you know, leave a like, a comment. Subscribe. Definitely subscribe. We need that. Subscribe. Subscription, subscription, subscription. <laughs> hey, don't forget to share with all your friends. 
and uh, tell us how you feel. And tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that you got it from 26 of Glencoe Media Network. Keep it real. <laughs>